Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard. Chapter 1 Introducing Spiritual Formation, the Beyond Within, and the Way of Jesus. Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. I'm so glad you're joining with me. We're reading walking through, learning, studying from this book, Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard for, I don't know, 30 years or so. Uh, I have understood my ministry kind of privately, basically to be Dallas for dummies. Dallas's uh, journey into the life of Jesus and the message of Jesus was so helpful to me. And then his life was so captivating that uh, it's not about him, but he is kind of a conduit or a vehicle for that message in the person of Jesus. But he can be a little bit dunce. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I can be a dunce. He could be dense. And um, so trying to find ways to make great spiritual wisdom accessible and life-changing for people is the great joy and sense of calling in my life. And we are the fellowship of the withered hand. We can't do it, but God can. So we're learning about this together. And we begin in the very first chapter by looking at the heart. Uh, my cousin Danny, hey Danny, is just getting out of the hospital right now. He was in for surgery and it turns out they found out he had a couple of arteries that were 95% blocked. That's really, really bad. So thank God for doctors and medicine. The world is a much better place with Danny in it. But as central as our physical heart is, there is a spiritual dimension to us and it's real, although its reality is often dismissed, overlooked, misunderstood in our day. So that's really where the book starts and where you and I start in our journey. We live from our heart. The part of us that drives and organizes our life is not the physical. This remains true even if we deny it. You have a spirit within you and it has been formed. It has taken on a specific character. I have a spirit and it has been formed. This is true of everyone. The human spirit is an inescapable, fundamental aspect of every human being, and it takes on whichever character it has from the experiences and the choices we have lived through or made in our past. This is what it means to be formed. Our life and how we find the world now and in the future is almost totally a simple result of what we have become in the depths of our being, in our spirit, will, or heart. We'll talk more about those words because they're very important. Often they tend to be vague in most of our minds. Those three, will, spirit, and heart, are very deeply connected as we will see. From here, we see our world and interpret reality. From here, we make our choices, break forth into action, try to change the world. We live from our depths, most of which we do not understand. The conscious part of us is important. The vast majority of our lives is beneath consciousness. Do you mean, some will say, that the individual and collective disasters that fill the human scene are not imposed upon us from without, that they do not just happen to us? Yes, that is what I mean, Dallas writes. In today's world, famine, war, and epidemic are almost totally the outcome of human choices, which are expressions of the human spirit. You have a spirit. You are a spiritual being. And that is what matters most about you. What's frustrating about this is I could just spend all 10 minutes every day reading through the book because its words are so much better than any commentary on them. But I do want to try to talk about how to understand this and apply it to our life. So there's an implication from this notion that we live from our hearts. Guard your heart for your whole life flows out of it. Because of this, the situations in which we find ourselves are never as important as our responses to them which come from our spiritual side. Say that one more time. 
The situations in which we find ourselves are never as important as our responses to them, which come from our spiritual side, our spirit. So very practical outcome from this for today. As you walk through the day, notice in any given moment, what is the situation outside of you and the response that is coming from within you? And often my response will tell me there are things going on in my depth that I did not know were there. I bought a pair of shoes last summer to go on a really fun trip with my friends rafting, Lewis and Clark. And then a month or so ago, I went to put them on and they didn't fit anymore. And I was very frustrated about this. Maybe they got washed in hot water, but still they ought to fit. And they were pretty expensive. So I took them back to the store where I bought them. And I said, uh, these ought to be replaced. And the person behind the counter asked, did you buy them uh, with our membership number? And I just lost it. I got really furious and mean-spirited at this person. And like, I know that a person is way more important than this. And my response to that person was not fair. Where did this come from? A couple weeks ago, after I found out I had COVID, I had to quarantine. And at one point I needed to leave the house because there was no more space. So I went to a hotel. And then I found out that Nancy might have been testing positive for COVID. And in either case, I would be able to go home. So although we had reserved the room a little bit longer, I went to the clerk and said, my wife has come down with COVID. I have to go take care of her. Now, I didn't know for sure that she came down with COVID. As it turns out, she did come down with COVID. But if I was going to be honest, I would have said that might be the case. Either way, I get to go home now. I didn't say that. Now, if if I look at it clearly, what's more important to me, speaking the truth or trying harder to get the money back from the deposit for a room reservation, it would be speaking truth. I know that. But inside me, uh, apparently there's something else deep down inside. And it's just uh, very humbling to see that. Now, what happens occasionally is we'll get caught doing something wrong. And then you look at this very often in news stories when this happens to somebody who's well-known, their response will be, that's not who I am. But of course, that's exactly who I am. Somebody who's ready to lie to get a little bit more money, that is apparently, clearly, who I am. Somebody that's ready to blow up at a person who's pretty low down in the organizational chart because they're not doing it, that's exactly who I am. So today, notice the situation outside you and the response coming from within you, and then ask, what am I seeing in my spirit? How would you describe your spirit? Hurried? Anxious? Angry? Envious? Discontented? Contemptuous towards others? Proud? Withdrawn? Dallas goes on to write about it's it's the uh, challenge of forming the spirit, that which is within us, that is the great challenge and always has been for humanity. And whoever it is that writes about this, Freud, uh, Marx, anybody, they're trying to figure out how do we fix what is wrong with the human spirit. One of the big questions is, will I do this by accident or on purpose? Will I do this by myself or seeking help from beyond? Dallas writes this. Spiritual formation, you may have heard that phrase, without regard to any specifically religious context or tradition, is the process by which the human spirit or will is given a definite form or character. It is a process that happens to everyone. The most despicable as well as the most admirable persons have had a spiritual formation. Terrorists as well as saints are the outcome of spiritual formation. Their spirits or hearts have been formed, period. We each become a certain kind of person in the depths of our being, gaining a certain type of character. We might think about it like this. There's an outer part to my person. I have a body. It is being formed or shaped all the time, on purpose or by accident, for better or for worse. How I eat, whether or not I exercise, sleep, rest, or so on, it is being formed. And then I have a spirit. I have an inner dimension to my being. 
I think and I feel and I choose. And that spirit is being formed on, on, on purpose or by accident, for better or for worse. People sometimes think that spiritual formation is just this optional track available at churches. No, 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 no. You are being formed spiritually all the time. What you see on a computer, conversation you have with other people, uh, a Zoom meeting, what you read, what you watch on TV, we are constantly being formed or shaped. Sometimes people wonder, what's the relationship between spiritual formation and discipleship? Sometimes people even think that uh, churches or traditions might be one or the other. Are we a discipleship kind of church or spiritual formation church? A disciple is simply somebody who has put Jesus in charge of their spiritual formation. And if I want Jesus to spiritually form me, the only way to do that is to become his disciple. So, you have a spirit. Today, be on the lookout. When each situation comes up, what's the situation going on around me? And what's the response coming from within me? And then I'll begin to learn a little bit about my spirit. And if you want, you can put Jesus in charge of forming it. More to come. In the meantime, guard your heart.